Tonight's keys to the game are brought to you by Busy Bee Realty. For your home's key, try Busy Bee Realty. It's a Putnam County League matchup tonight right here on WOSN. We're at Kaleida High School as the home team Wildcats host the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Good evening, everyone. Alongside Mark Shine, I'm Patrick Kamler. Both these teams in the PCL undefeated, and we're looking forward to a good matchup tonight. Should be, Patrick, with the Ottoville Big Green putting a loss on Miller City last night. These are the last two undefeated teams in the conference. Big matchup. Looking at the Busy Bee Realty keys to the game, what are we looking at for each team to come away with a W tonight? Well, tonight, Patrick, we're going to look at a little, little bit of different stat. We're going to look at offensive efficiency rating tonight. This is probably a game where there won't be a lot of possessions per quarter, so we're going to look at how many points each team scores per possession tonight and keep track of that. Since there probably won't be a lot of points on the board, who can get the hustle points? Who gets that rebound and scores on an offensive possession? Who gets a steal and goes in transition and does something a little bit extra to help his team? And finally, it should be a fourth quarter battle tonight who executes offensively and defensively in the fourth quarter. Those are your Busy Bee Realty keys to the game. When we come back, starting lineups we'll have for you along with the tip-off right here on WOSN. Back at Kaleida High School as we get ready for basketball action right here on WOSN. The starting lineups for Kaleida and Columbus Grove being announced as we take a look at the starters tonight. First for the visiting Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Look at number five, Jace Darbyshire had a big game last night. Number 11, Riley Brubaker. Number 22, Joey Warnicky. Number 32, Logan Diller, and number 41, Will Voorhees. Voorhees always a uh, offensive threat and defensive threat, really, for the Bulldogs in any contest. Looking at the starters tonight for Kaleida. Number 12, Adam Langalls. Number 20, Luke Langalls. Number 30, Devin Quartercracks. Number 32, Randy Zeller. And number 50, Joe Gerdeman. The officials for tonight's contest. See them taking off their robes there. Matt Mosier, Eric Schwab, and Chris Gutman. Nice crowd here on hand tonight to support both teams. Uh, pretty good turnout really for Columbus Grove. Obviously Kaleida having a home game, a great turnout for them as well. Take a look at the coaching staff tonight for Columbus Grove. Take a look at the bench there. Columbus Grove uh, undefeated in the PCL. Off to a great start, 7-3 and three overall this season. They've been able to string together a uh, couple of wins here in a row. I they see under head coach Ryan Steckschulte. Well, Patrick, a couple of weeks ago, I had a chance to talk with Ryan Steckschulte for a while, and he talked about the difficulty of trying to win two conferences. Of course, they play in the Northwest Conference every Friday night, and play some Saturdays and some Tuesdays in the PCL and how difficult that is to try to maintain a schedule where you can compete with both those conferences. Indeed, so a look at uh, Dick Cotercracks there, the longtime head coach for Kaleida. Eight and four on the season are the Wildcats. They are also undefeated in the PCL, as we mentioned, and you're right, that can be uh, just let alone kind of keep track of which conference you're playing any given night, but also trying to win uh, two conferences. But right now, Grove in uh, in great shape in both of them. Well, most schools on a Saturday night, it's a non-conference game, and yes, you want to win, but it's not that uh, dramatic situation trying to compete for a league situation on both nights, so it is a, a mentally and physically taxing thing for players and for coaching staffs. Grove having a non-conference game last week as they took on Lipsick, and it was a close contest up until the very end when Columbus Grove was able to pull away with a uh, big night from Will Voorhees. But uh, this time, Columbus Grove should be a little better rested. Came off an overtime game last week. We'll see how they do. They tip it off to get us started. Voorhees wins the tip into the hands of Derbyshire, and we're underway. Kaleida starts out man to man. They really help down in the post. There's Brubaker. First shot of the night is a three-pointer. No good. Rebounded by Devin Quartercracks. Long pass on the way to Adam Langhalls for the first bucket of the night. And there we are talking about hustle points in our pregame show, and there we have an example of that, a transition basket before the Grove defense is set. So Grove responds, they're gonna feed it inside of their big man, Will Voorhees, he makes a nice couple moves, puts it with the right hand. He was surrounded by Wildcats in that play and still made the bucket. Well, Will at 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, is a strong player in the post, offensively and defensively, and he just powered up through defense. 
feed it into Gerdeman. He'll fire a short range jumper in there, rebounded. Nice put back by Zeller, who gets the friendly bounce. Well, and there's the other part of our hustle plays offensive rebound. Collided with one of each here early. Back in the hands of Darbyshire. He'll take it in. His shot just a little short. Able nice to get the put back. Voorhees with the reverse. Tremendous touch pass off the offensive rebound, and Voorhees with the reverse layup. Nice offensive presence, and we're tied up at four. Working it down low inside. There's Zeller. His turnaround jumper is good. Lida has scored on all three of their possessions. In fact, we're, we're, we're scoring points at a more rapid pace than I would have thought. We'll see if that, <laughs> that continues. Cutting inside is Diller, and defense closes up for Kaleida, and it'll be Wildcat basketball. That'll be over-penetrated that time. And when the ball was tipped loose, he hit it a second time and knocked it out of bounds. The Wildcats have possession. Langholz brings it up, calls a play. Luke Langholz, he'll spot up. That's a two-pointer, in and out. Wernicke there for the rebound. And all the way is Darbyshire. He'll pass it out, but stolen away. Was intended for Brubaker, and they'll get the tie up. Possession arrow is going to favor Kaleida. First turnover of the basketball game. Nice defensive effort by Langholz really to break up that whole series and get the ball back for the Wildcats. Quarter cracks now. He'll pull up from long range and hits. Measured his man, just went up and scored over him. Off to a big start here. Nine points. We played just three minutes. A lot of scoring so far, comparatively. Mm -hmm. Working inside to Voorhees. He's double teamed. That's going to leave Warnicky open. He drives, passes it off. Voorhees gets his man up, penetrates, goes in with the left hand. They used the offhand very well that time. Fifteen points total scored so far here in the first quarter between two teams. And here's the steal by Columbus Grove. Darbyshire pushing it up. To Voorhees stops, pops the right hand, and it is in. Good job of getting out in transition, and although it's kind of a five-on-five -five set, they scored before the defense was prepared to defend it. Coming up from halfway through the first quarter, it's a 9-8 lead for Kaleida. There's a pull-up jumper. Almost a fadeaway by quarter cracks, and it's good. Brew breaker over to Darbyshire, now in the corner to Diller. Voorhees passes it off. Little driving kick. There's Voorhees out from 20. His shot is short. Able to corral the rebound is Zeller for Kaleida. They'll pass it far down. There's Gerdeman. And his shot is good. Just inside the perimeter, and it's a five-point lead. Another example of transition basket. Gerdeman gets that 12-foot jump shot before the defense is prepared to defend him. Kaleida attacking the basket and scoring easily so far. Baker passing it inside. Here's Derbyshire for three. That's long. Warnicky with the rebound. Voorhees puts it up with the right hand. Can't get the glass to go. Quarter crack cleans it up off the glass. Bengals passing it inside to Zeller. Zeller, nice move. Trying to get the defenders off their feet. He does, but can't finish. Real good up and under move. Ball just didn't fall for him. Darby Shire with the right hand. Can't get it. Diller able to clean it up. Good offensive rebound basket. Oh, 
Less than two and a half in the first and a three point lead for Kaleida. First player to score other than Voorhees. Nice penetration inside by Zeller and draws contact. First foul of the game. Played almost six minutes. That's going to go on Joey Warnicky. First foul will result in foul shots. As the junior heads at a line, and missed the first. We've had very few stoppages in play, and so with this free throw, both coaches are going to make some substitutions. See Austin Swift and Cole Miller come in for Kaleida. Bailey Clement in for Columbus Grove. Second shot on the way is in. Inside, there's Voorhees. Shows how talented Will is. They ran a second player at him, and he still was able to go up and score through traffic, and he has 10 points. Two-point lead for Kaleida. Working inside. Nice take to the rack by Miller. Patrick, these two teams give up 48 points a game, does Coach Deckshoulder's team. Coach Quarterkrafts gives up 46, and I bet neither one of them are happy with the defense this evening because both of them are giving up points way above their average. Indeed. A lot of offensive scoring here in the early going. We've remarked on that a couple times. Both teams are already combined for 30 points. Here's Voorhees from long range. Tipped back by Columbus Grove and out of bounds. That will be Kawaita basketball. The uh, JV game that we watched beforehand was a 30-24 final in favor of Kaleida. And Usually as the JV goes, the varsity goes sort of like that. And we were not expecting that uh, they might equal those point totals by halftime. Well, these are two coaching staffs that really put a great emphasis on defense. And so I think they're a little bit uh, soft right now defensively. And I would expect that to pick up as the game goes along. Kaleida slowing it down offensively. Yeah, they have that last shot of the quarter look. They do. 38 seconds left. Four point lead for Kaleida on the first federal scoreboard. Almost poked away by Derbyshire. And indeed, that's what it looks looking like. Kaleida is going to hold for that last shot. Grove starting to creep up offensively. See Clement out there. And they find a three-pointer open. There's Swift, can't get it to fall. Able to clean it up is Zeller for the rebound. Uh, quarter cracks. Might have taken that shot a second or two early in their offense, but they got an offensive rebound because of it, and that will be the second turnover. They'll call Darbyshire They'll call for the walk. Grove. Yep. So six-tenths of a second remaining in the first. Probably just going to go ahead and end the quarter. And they'll try and get it off. And that will bring the first quarter to a close. So after one, a relatively high scoring affair here in Kaleida. The Wildcats on top of the Bulldogs, 18 to 12. Second quarter action coming up on WOSN. First Federal is proud to sponsor tonight's scoreboard. Bank with the people you know and trust. That is First Federal Bank. And tonight's instant replay sponsored by Union Bank. Proud to support local athletes and communities. Second quarter action just about ready to get underway. It's an 18-12 score in favor of Kaleida over Columbus Grove. Patrick Kamler, Mark Schein with you. And uh, we mentioned they're probably going to talk about defense here between quarters. Well, you're right, Patrick, because we talked about our offensive efficiency rating tonight. And Kaleida had 13 possessions and scored 18 points. That's 1.38 points per possession, and that's a lot. Columbus Grove is at 1.08. They scored uh, 13 points on 12 possessions. And so they've they actually are above one, two. That's a, a, both of them have very high numbers, especially that Kaleida number. 
So second quarter will get underway now. We'll see what adjustments they've made. And Voorhees able to score over a couple of defenders and make this a four-point game. The adjustment is throw it into Will Voorhees, who has 12 <laughs> of their 14 points. Voorhees already closing in on his average. He's averaging 19 points a game. Wernicke playing tough defense on quarter cracks. He's able to get it away. He had just one personal foul. That on Joy Warnicky in the first quarter. No personal fouls on Kaleida. Double team here. Zeller trying to penetrate. He's immediately double teamed. Here's Langhalls from downtown. Yes. It continues. Five points for him so far tonight, and it's a 21-14 lead. Put in and out, the ball went to the low box, and then skipped around, and he was set up on the arc, got his feet set and stroked it. Sure, Coach Tech Schulte would love to see some other kids get involved in the offense besides Voorhees. Well, he's got a horse right now. He's going to ride. They're surrounding this time. They do, triple teamed. He'll pass it back off to Diller. Now Voorhees has it. He penetrates, triple teamed again. That leaves Brubaker open in the corner. His shot off the mark. Kaleida with the board. Derbyshire almost able to take that one away. Coda Cracks will drive, pull up, and good. That was a tough shot. Hand in face, had to fall backwards a little bit. Nice touch by the young man. Ten points for him tonight. And it's a nine-point lead for Kaleida. Give and go to Voorhees. Has to kick it back out. Kaleida closes that beautifully. And timeout as Columbus Grove wants to talk this one over. So 5.51 left. We got a 23-14 lead here. Kaleida on top of Columbus Grove. And so far we've seen... A, um, well, we'll talk about that here in just a second. Kaleida up by nine. We'll be back. All right, welcome back. 5.51 remaining. You know, if you miss high-scoring basketball games, if you're a big fan of all things vintage and just can't get your head around that high-definition stuff, well, we have the show for you. Tune in to Throwback 44 every Monday night at 9 for a look back at some of the best games of yesteryear. Hear from those who were there and enjoy our area's classics on Throwback 44. And I am ashamed to say that those games were uh, played when I was in high school. There's Voorhees. Oh, we had a comedian at the station last week say, hey, Coach Shine, I didn't know that you ever had brown hair. <laughs> comedian, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we are full of them at our station. <laughs> But those are very popular, those games are, and they're, they're rightfully so. Mark Coos did a great job putting those together. Indeed. Miss on the 12-footer by Zeller. Grove trying to close the gap here a little bit. Working inside to Voorhees once again. He'll pull up, shot no good. Almost had the rebound, did Zeller, but Kaleida able to take it away from him. That was Miller. They fire a pass down court. Quickly, there's Langhalls oh, looking inside. Pass. Miller all alone. Very nice job of keeping his eyes up and seeing a teammate open on the low box and threw it through traffic. Finding an open shot. Kaleida not really providing much of anything. Here's Darbyshire. He's double teamed. He'll throw it up off the front iron. Coda Cracks will bring it up. Working around. Open three pointer by Langhalls is off. Darbyshire can't get it. Miller with the rebound. And Grove will come up with it off the knock. No. Columbus Grove went overtime last night at Paulding. They're on the road again this evening, and, and they just seem just a step slow defensively. And I would bet that will pick up as the game goes along and the adrenaline flows and they get back into this. And they're work it inside. And that shot will count by Elisha Jones. Now send the line to 
complete a potential three-point play. Take a look at the Union Bank replay. See the pass down inside, the drop step power move. There's contact on the elbow and nice strength to follow through and get the basket. That was the first foul of the half that will go against the Wildcats. Jones can't complete the three-point play, misses the foul shot, collide a basketball. There's the steal, two throws in a row. Grove continuing to try and cut into this lead with three and a half left in the first half. Here's Brubaker. Working inside, kicks it back to Diller. Now Warnicky takes a shot, goes inside, and nice. Columbus Grove picking up full court after the basket. Change the tempo a little bit, and they have. That's three turnovers consecutively. That was off the hands of Gerdeman, number 50. The Grove seems to have the Wildcats rattled a little bit on offense. Yeah, I would agree. The press changed the, the look that Kaleida was getting and to change the tempo of the basketball game, and they've had three turnovers on three consecutive possessions. Good move by Coach Dexchel to change the defense. Clement brings it up. They hand to Diller all alone. Brubaker right hand and gets it in. And consequently, it sparked their offense as well. Now down to a three-point lead from a nine-point lead just moments ago. Working inside, here's Gerdeman working against Voorhees. And travel called on Gerdeman. Yeah, lost his balance in the low box. Trying to make a move inside. Three-point lead for Kaleida. Coming up on two minutes left in the first half. Voorhees pulls up from 16. It's short. Kaleida with a rebound. That's quarter cracks. Very rapidly played first half. We're under two minutes already. Fast moving, a lot of offense. Offense has slowed down a little bit. There's a drive inside. Nice block by Voorhees. Able to save it in bounds is Brubick. Couple nice defensive plays there for Grove, and now a chance to tie. First to help by Voorhees, and second, his teammate chasing it down the corner. Voorhees working inside. Clear some space. That one is off. Light has gone five consecutive possessions without a score. Much different than in the first quarter. Quick shot, no good. And now six. Grove on a 13 to four run here in this second quarter. And now we come under a minute. Baker with it out to Warnicky. He's open. He'll take the three pointer. It's short. Coto cracks with the rebound. There's another three pointer on the way. This time is good from Adam Langhalls. Having trouble scoring in the half court, so you get a quick shot in transition and bury the three. Big basket. Eight points tonight for him. Back to a six point lead. 26 seconds left. Bulldogs, no doubt, looking for final shot. Love to cut this to a one possession game heading into halftime. Final seconds. There's Voorhees from way downtown, and it's short. And that will bring the first half of basketball to a conclusion with the score Kaleida 28, Columbus Grove 22, as we send you to the Road State College Exercise Science Program Halftime Show. Guys, take it away. John Soccer Dentistry is proud to be this season's halftime adjustment sponsor. 
28-22 is our halftime score in favor of Kaleida. Patrick Kamler, Mark Shine here with you. And at uh, halftime, I imagine that both teams are probably still looking for defensive adjustments. We've seen quite a bit of offense, got a little better for defenses in the second quarter. But I'd say that both coaches are looking for a little bit more defense. I would think that's correct. Coach Dick Short did a nice job of changing things up when he went to his press. It forced the Kaleida Wildcats into four consecutive turnovers for the half. The Columbus Grove Bulldogs have 22 points on 25 possessions. That comes out to a .88 offensive average per possession. You'd like to have that up around one. Pretty good defensive percentage, though, for Coach Quartercrafts. Most of that, of course, came in the first quarter. On the other side, Coach Quartercrafts, they're averaging 1.17 points per possession. They've scored 28 points on 24 possessions, and that's pretty good. If you get above one or 1 or 1.05, that's a pretty good half. So I think you're right. Defensively, things would like to step it up a little bit. That is your halftime adjustment. And as um, you know, something else we looked at, too, the scoring, there's been quite a bit of balance on the side of Kaleida. Uh, Devin Quartercracks has 10 points. Uh, Adam Langall's with eight points. But if you look over at the Columbus Grove side, Will Voorhees, of course, having another big night. He's got 14 of Columbus Grove's 22 points. Well, when you got a horse, you ride him, and that's what you do. He's been able to score in the low box. He's got 14, but certainly, um, I think you can see they started to run a second player at him in the second quarter, make it a little bit more difficult for him to score. He actually had to step out to the three-point line a couple times, which he can make one from three-point line, but he had to go out there to get himself open. I think you're right. That Darby Sharprap, Brubaker, somebody else needs to step up and take a little bit of load off of Will Voorhees. Final discussions on the sideline as we get ready for third quarter action here from Kaleida High School. The Kaleida cheerleaders per, uh, performing at halftime, doing a terrific job. They were state runners up in uh, competitions last year here in the state of Ohio. They did a great job, man. They rolled out some mats and they got after it. There yeah. was 18 of them out there, I think. So with that, the third quarter is underway. Switch sides, Wildcats will move to the other side of the court now. Man to man with a lot of help inside. Not, not necessarily out pressuring everybody, but a lot of help inside. There's a quick pull up and change possession a couple times underneath there. Last touch by Columbus Grove. Rudman had it stripped as he was going up for the offensive rebound attempt to score. Collided to inbound. And fire this one off to Adam Langhalls, and Langhalls takes a hard shot and a foul from Jace Darbyshire. Yeah, both going for the basketball, and Adam Langhalls came down off balance and fell very hard. Take a look at the Union Bank replay. Really couldn't find anyone, so he fires it up. And just two guys really going for the basketball. Yeah. and Like being a free safety trying to knock <laughs> one down in the end zone, and they just collided. And correctly, Derbyshire gets his second foul of the game. I'm sorry, it's his first foul of the game. And with that, uh, Adam Langholz has to take a seat. He's going to talk to the trainer a little bit. Yeah. So that will bring Grant Unperfer in. Got a cut on his left elbow they're going to have to address before he can play again. Yep. So he'll get that checked out. Underthurf will come in. This has the ball knocked away from him. There's the double team by Grove on Zeller. He gets out of trouble. There's a quick pull up jumper from Luke Langalls. No good. Grove running the floor. Here's Voorhees. He takes it up strong with the right hand. And he gets it in. About your 6'7 guy leading the break and going in transition. <laughs> I'll throw something out at you, Patrick. Will Voorhees spent a lot of his youth living in the Bass School District. Could you imagine him with Terrence Sullivan and Gossard and those guys? Wow. What a formidable team that would be. There's Brubaker taking up strong with the right hand. Now it's down to a two point lead, 28 26. Tipped away by Voorhees. And that will stay Kaleida basketball. Good reaction as he was the interceptor on that play and tipped it out of bounds. Yeah. 
There's a hold inside, good call. Looks like that's gonna go against Brubaker, that's his first. And that equals the number of fouls we had in the entire first half. Cracks gets it back now. And trying to take it up is fouled. Going to go against Warnicky, and that'll be his second. He saw the overplay defensively and realized he had an opportunity to go to the rim and does a nice job of head and shoulder fake, goes to the basket, and there's our contact on the shooting arm. That'll be good for shots. Cora Cracks hits the first. Played more than a minute and a half without any points in the half had the Wildcats. That gets them on the board finally. Their first one of the third quarter. Here's the second shot. Rattles around a few times. It goes in. Four point lead for Kaleida, 30 to 26. Derbyshire inside to Voorhees and blocked by Zeller. Good help, Zeller came over after Gerderman got beat across the lane, but nice help, and we get another foul. Derbyshire going after the ball, and fouls quarter cracks. Four, 14 fouls already in the half for Chris Dexchilde. So Derbyshire picks up two quick fouls here in the third quarter. There's quarter cracks from downtown, good. His second three-pointer of the night, 15 points total. He's had a really nice night shooting the basketball as quarter crabs. Warnicky passes it off to Diller. Derbyshire feeding Voorhees inside. All Kaleida pretty much collapses on him. He can't get the shot to fall. Diller. Thought maybe Grove was the last one to touch it, but it will stay Bulldog basketball. Guess who's back? After a brief absence, Langholz has the uh, elbow wrapped up, and he's back in the game. Good to see a young man come back on the floor. I thought he'd fallen very hard on his back, but uh, good to see him back on the floor. <laughs> Bailey Clement also coming in for Columbus Grove. Clement has the ball now. Over to Diller. Working inside on Voorhees. Voorhees. Back to Brubaker for three. Hard off the iron. Zill with the rebound. Firing it across court to quarter cracks, and now he'll penetrate. He pulls up. His shot's off the iron. Darbyshire running with it for the Bulldogs. He penetrates inside. Right hand gets the friendly roll and the foul. What a tremendous hesitation dribble at about the 18-foot mark. He pulled up a second. Just enough to draw his defender to him and then went around him for his first basket. And there's the hesitation move right there. You see him go, and there's the contact. That was Luke Langholz who picked up the foul. That's his first. And I'm going to bet that's a little bit of blood that was on the floor from when Langholz fell a little while ago. Very well, might be correct. These are Derbyshire's first points of the night. He averages about 15 and a half a game. And misses the three point, or the uh, foul shot. Chance to make a three point play. Almost stripped away by Brubaker. In the corner is Zeller. No good, that will bounce off the top of the backboard and will go back to Columbus Grove. Where the top of the backboard is in play because it went over the top of the backboard, hit that little support back there. That's what put, put it out. The actual top of the backboard is still in play. Good help inside. Gets a held ball situation. And they do. That will stick with Columbus Grove. Well, you can tell the coach Kortokratz has really put some you know, effort into finding wherever Voorhees is and dropping a second or a third player to him. Every time Voorhees has gotten the ball down low, there's been three or four yeah. defenders on him pretty much every time. Austin Swift will come in as Luke Langalls will have a seat. Voorhees gets it out top of the key. 
Voorhees has it around the charity stripe. 17-footer around the rim and out. And Langholz penetrates and kicks it back. Here's Zeller working in the inside against Brubaker and gets the right-hand scoop shot to fall in. He did a tremendous job of holding his pivot foot and not traveling. It's a seven-point lead for Kaleida. Every time Grove gets within a couple three points, the Wildcats answer. Wildcats have been in control of this game pretty much from the tip. Shire to Clement. He kicks it out to Brubaker. Once again inside to Voorhees, but a foul on the floor. And it's going to go against Gerdeman. They caught Gerdeman behind that time and the quick entry pass down inside, and Gerdeman picked up his first foul. It's actually a good foul, otherwise, Voorhees was going to catch the ball deep. It's a good foul. Working around, nice perimeter ball movement by the Bulldogs. He's working inside, passes it out. Go inside, defense collapses. Doesn't get anything, and Langhoff takes a spill again. You know, Voorhees has had to work so hard to get the basketball. Sometimes you work so hard to get it, by the time you actually corral it inside, that the uh, you don't have as much energy to go up and score. So I'll get the ball back to Kaleida. Come up on three minutes left in the third quarter. Seven point lead for the Wildcats. After that flurry of four turnovers in a row against the press, they've handled very well here in the third quarter. In the corner for three is Langhalls. No good. Zeller able to clean it up and is fouled. Two shots coming up. That foul is on Logan Diller. That's his first. What do we figure out, uh, Patrick? The first of multiple Saturday nights we spend together here over the next few weeks. You and I are at Columbus Grove next week when they match up with the Ottawa Glendorf Titans. And then we have Minster and Jackson Center. And some kind of mid-February on a Saturday, we get to Indian Lake Bell Fountain. Yeah. So. We are all over the place here in the next couple oh, of weeks. How about that? <laughs> Here's a replay of that last possession. Nice strong movement inside by Zeller. Zeller averaging about 12 and a half points a game so far this season. And He's got seven tonight. Make that eight. Hits both the line, and it's back up to a nine-point lead for Kaleida, which equals their largest of the contest. Just six points on the board so far in the quarter for Columbus Grove. There's a big basket for them. There's Derbyshire from downtown. And that brings it right back to a six-point advantage. Five points tonight for Derbyshire, and they're all in the third quarter. Quarter cracks, working against Voorhees, tosses it up with the right hand, can't get it to fall. Voorhees with the rebound, stolen away by Swift. Inside the Zeller with the right hand. Thirty-nine, thirty-one. Well, in the pregame, we talked about hustle plays, and that's one of them. Get a steal and a basket for your team. Push the lead to eight. Derbyshire saved that one. That pass a little high. He'll pull up for three once again and swish. Timeout, Columbus Grove, 146. Remaining in the third quarter. That's a five-point lead for the Wildcats, 39-34. We'll be back. First Federal is proud to sponsor tonight's scoreboard. Bank with the people you know and trust. That's First Federal Bank. And tonight's instant replay, sponsored by the Union Bank. Proud to support local athletes and communities. 39-34 on the First Federal scoreboard. Kaleida on top of Columbus Grove. 146 left in the third quarter. And we've had a little bit of flurry of scoring here in the last uh, minute and a half of game time. Coach wanted to really establish that press again. Fry does a nice job of spreading the floor. It goes ball reversal and beats it. Cats with the ball in a minute and a half. A 
Wildcats are going to slow it down here. Facing a matchup zone, they're going to be very patient. Not really looking for last shot, I don't think, but as you said, Mark, going to be very patient, wait for a good shot if they can get one. Coach Porter Kratz likes last shot of every quarter, and under a minute now, he may well run this down. Unless somebody gets a, an easy one or something they're very comfortable with. So this possession's already pushing 40 yeah. seconds, so why not 50 more? Uh, Coach Stexler just put his guys in the straight man instead of the matchup zone, too, trying to force something to happen. Put a cracks with Clement on him. Grove trying to force him closer and closer to the timeline. And a little bit of a trap by Clement and Derbyshire. Now they'll penetrate in. Langhalls kicks it back out, and they'll reset. 20 seconds now. It's a well-disciplined team to do what Kaleida has done here in the last minute plus. Down to eight. Langhalls throws it up, right hand, floater, no good. Clement gets it back, final seconds. Zeller all the way, right hand, no good. We've got three in the books from Kaleida and the Wildcats maintaining a five-point lead over Columbus Grove. Fourth quarter action when we come back here on WOSN. Welcome back to Kaleida, this Putnam County League matchup right here on WOSN. As we take a look at the PCL standings, the two teams we're featuring tonight, Columbus Grove and Kaleida, are both on top of the PCL this year, undefeated. But of course, Grove at 3-0, Kaleida right there at 2-0. A competitive league as always. You've got Miller City, Lipsick, Audeville right there uh, underneath. As we are about ready for fourth quarter action to get started right here on WOSN. Patrick Hamler, Mark Shine with you, and the uh, offense uh, pretty steady in uh, all three quarters. This is the third quarter with the first one where Columbus Grove outscored Kaleida, but the Cats still with a five-point lead. Yeah, they, each, each team is about even. They each had about the same number of possessions, same number of points in the quarter, so a nice balance. Each team averaged about a point per possession. Here's Zeller from downtown. High off the rim, no good. Final quarter of action in what has been a very competitive game. Kaleida has been able to push it out to a nine-point lead various times, but Columbus Grove has always been able to fight it back, and they try again. Here's Clement for three. Down to a two-point lead. Just three turnovers tonight for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. It cost them five points. Kaleida has turned it over six times. It's cost them ten points. And we're into the fourth quarter, and let's talk about execution. Zeller with the right hands after the spin move, and it's good. And there's one. Find an open post guy who could make a spin move and score one-on-one. -on -one. That's 12 points tonight for Zeller, one of the captains on this team, along with Joe Gerdeman. It's a four-point lead. Darby Shire looking inside for Voorhees, finds him. Voorhees promptly triple teamed. As he is able to follow his own shot and get the offensive board and the putback. Well, that's one of those things Coach Kordekratz will be disappointed in because they played him perfectly. One guy baseline, one guy in the center. But he was able to go up and get the offensive rebound on his own miss. Down to a two-point lead for Kaleida, 41-39. Kaleida has led the entire way here tonight. Kordekratz thinks about penetrating and backs off. Then he does so again. And is able to draw the foul. And I believe it's on Derbyshire, number five. Seventh team foul, even though this is a shooting foul, it will be one and ones from here on out. The Wildcats have committed just two fouls in the second half. That so is Derbyshire's Got what, like a million wins or something like that? Yeah, something like that. Closed in on a million, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> Devin put a crack suit. Hits it. Quarter cracks averaging uh, just under 15 points a game. And it comes into this game with already at, uh, with 16 tonight. Second shot is good.
Grove has been able to cut the lead down to, well, we've seen two in this quarter, two, three, four points, and Clyde always able to push it back to as many as nine. Look inside pass intercepted by Quarter Cracks. Good job by Quarter Cracks because Voorhees was open on a back cut. He recognized it, got it stopped. Zeller's three pointer in and out. And last touch by Columbus Grove. Rue Baker and Derbyshire were in there trying to save the ball from going out of bounds. And well, partly because Gerdman was working so hard, they went, all three of them went after the basketball and it went off the two Grove players. Porter Christ gets the inbound. He's guarded by Derbyshire. A pass inside to Gerdman. He's promptly double teamed and gets the shot and the foul. Foul will go against Brubaker. That's his second. Good strength inside to draw contact, get fouled. Gerdman is not a big score, but watch this post move down inside. Powers up right there through the arms. Uses his strength in his body to get the basket and see what he can do at the line. His role is to defend and rebound. He's done that well tonight. Foul shot doesn't go. Six point lead once again for Kaleida. Diller looked inside to Voorhees. There's the collapse again by the defense, and Voorhees able to score. That's 20 points tonight. Four and a quarter for Voorhees. He has just under half of Columbus Grove's point total. There's quarter cracks Whoa. from Route 115, and it's good. Boy, is he having a basketball game tonight. He's got 20 as well. Back to a seven-point lead for Kaleida. Pass inside to Brubaker, blocked by Zeller. Last touched by quarter cracks, so it will stay with the Bulldogs. Baker, after the shot was blocked, scrambled around and put enough pressure on Kalia that they were able to turn it over. Take a look at it there. He just saw Zeller just standing in very nicely. Voorhees, meanwhile, able to cut through the defense and score. Become a shootout between Kordekratz and Voorhees. <laughs> Here's Kordekratz. Nice Gets pass. Him off. Zeller unable to finish. It's numbers favoring Columbus Grove right now. Voorhees inside to Diller, and it's good. That's exactly what happened. Timeout here on the court with 421 remaining and a three-point lead for the Wildcats. We'll be right back here on WOSN. Well, as you know, tournament time is right around the corner, and WOSN has every moment covered. Tune in Sunday, February 9th, for our annual Bracket Breakdown show where we unveil the brackets, analyze the matchups, and interview coaches and players. That is February 9th at 7 p.m. right here on WOSN. Too bad you had to read that. I was listening to Sandstorm. I kind of like, like that techno stuff. <laughs> Halfway through the fourth quarter, almost anyway, and a three-point lead for Kaleida. As Columbus Grove is... Tried to tighten this up numerous times, and Kaleida has been able to stand strong and push back. So we'll see how the final four minutes of this one unfold. That is correct. Coach Stoli now has only two timeouts remaining. It's Langalls for three. And it's off to the right, and Diller going for the rebound, and I believe he'll be called for the foul. And that will be one in one situation. Of course, that's nine fouls for Columbus Grove and one more, and Kaleida will be shooting two foul shots every time down the court with a foul. And just two personal fouls, two team fouls in the second half on Kaleida. Drew Baker will take a breather as Clement comes in. and get it to go. Bulldogs can tie with a three-pointer here. Be the first tie since uh, four to four. Inside, 
There's Diller, his shot blocked by Zeller. Zeller's come up with a couple of blocks tonight. Yes, he has. Long arms, good timing. Lido once again holds off Columbus Grove. And Borges gets called for a push. Yeah, there it is. Want to make sure the call is right. Here's the Union Bank replay. You see four, he's on the right side of your screen. And here comes the screen and roll, and you can see he gets called for the push. Puts Gerdman back at the foul line. So that's the first foul tonight on Voorhees, but more importantly, that's going to put Gerdman at the line, and they're in the double bonus now, so they'll be shooting two foul shots the rest of the way. Gerdman hits the first. Second foul shot coming up on the way. Gerdman averaging about three and a half points a game, and he's sitting on six right now. Five point lead for Kaleida. Keep passing it off to Voorhees. Oh, he traveled. Yep. And he does walk. Shuffle shot the won't steps. Count. Yep. They ran a set to get in the ball at the top of the circle and just overforced it. Right with the basketball inbounding quickly. Second turnover of the quarter for Columbus Grove. Deller skies to receive that pass. He's promptly double teamed. Trapped by midcourt, and they'll get it to quarter cracks. And Grove closes in the trap there. Darby Shar and Warnke trying to close him in, but he passes it off. This is the time of game when Coach Quartercrats's teams typically become very patient and very disciplined. There's the trap there on Quartercrats in trouble and timeout. Try to preserve the possession, and they do. So a five-point lead for Kaleida with 2.35 left in the contest. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It's a five-point lead for Kaleida with two and a half remaining here in the contest. Want to spend a, send a special birthday congratulations to Eli Bowers. It's his 21st birthday today. One of the uh, members of our crew here tonight, and we wish him a very happy birthday. See, we should have bought some more raffle tickets for the cake. We would have had a cake for him. Well. Better luck next year, I guess. There's poked away. And the ball is saved from being out of bounds by Voorhees. Now Voorhees going all the way to pass it off to Warnicky. Back inside of Voorhees. He's pretty much quadruple teamed. And I thought they're gonna throw a walk on Voorhees. They're gonna call a foul on, I believe, Gerdeman. Yeah, Gerdeman pushed him. As he was trying to make that up and under move. But it's only the third foul of the half, so yeah. it's a good foul. Three more fouls to give does uh, Kaleida have. They get this one in, almost picked off. Bulldogs maintain possession. There's Warnke. He's all alone. He'll take a three-pointer. It's short off the front rim, and boy, he's going for it. And they'll call him for the foul. Yeah, that's correct. Went for the rebound, didn't have the position that the Kaleida Wildcat had, so that's going to put the Wildcats back at the free throw line again. And that will be Quarter Cracks who heads the line. Double bonus. Shots in and out. You sort of get the sense that if Kaleida, with the opportunities that they're going to have at the line over the next two minutes and one second, if they can hit those foul shots, they can probably pull away enough to uh, take this one away from Columbus Grove. Well, they're probably going to have to because I think Grove's going to have to be super aggressive now as they try to get back in the game. Here's Diller kicking it back out. Clement alone for three, short. 
they don't get a steal here, they're going to have to foul because Collider will just set on the basketball. Like right there. That's, that's a good foul. Yep. And then this is the neighborhood where Collider will just sit on it, as you said, and pull it for the final shot or not take one at all, really, if they have to in this case. Logan Diller's fourth foul. And that will send Randy Zeller to the line. Diller with four points tonight. First shot around and in. See Brubaker come in. Diller and Warnicky will have a seat. Some of the offensive guys now getting in there. Drew Baker, 30% from the line. Diller, who, or from uh, three-point range, rather. Logan Diller, 43%, who just went out. Imagine he'll go back in. Here's Derbyshire. His shot is out. He'll get it back to him. Less than a minute and a half remaining. Derbyshire will penetrate. And they will pick up the foul on Kaleida. That will go against Gerdeman. That's his third. Well, since Coach Sexual had called timeout with 4.21 to go in the basketball game, Columbus Grove has not scored, and we're at a minute 22. So we played just under three minutes of basketball, 2.59 without any points. And well, that, that free throw right there. Derbyshire, an 87% foul shooter. And hits both. A couple of big free throws. Back to a two possession game. That was a nice pass. It he was, was trapped and went all the way cross court to an open teammate. And first of all, that's understanding where everybody belongs in their press offense. And then second, being able to see the open teammate. You put Columbus Grove in the unenviable position of having to foul pretty much every time Kaleida touches the basketball. Where they've made five out of their last six. Here's Adam Langhalls at the line, and he hits it. Since they've gone to double bonus now, they are six of seven. Columbus Grove with two timeouts remaining, collided with four. And now it's seven of eight. We talked about doing things right in the fourth quarter. One of those is making free throws, which Kaleida has done. Eight point lead once again, final minute. Darbyshire will drive in, try to draw contact. Zeller with another block, and that will send Darbyshire to the line. That's Zeller's first foul of the night. He blocked the shot cleanly up above, but got him with the body down low. Let's take a look at that on the replay and see. Nice penetration dribble here, first of all. And we got lots of bodies in the way. Yep, there's the body contact. Zeller has been very good with blocking shots tonight as foul shot is Miss, there's Voorhees able to put it back. Six point lead. Clock continuing to run, 50 seconds remaining. Try and trap, and Langhall's able to fight through it and is fouled by Clement. Just couldn't get that extra step necessary to get the sideline shut off, so he had to foul. Langhall's back in the line. And if you're Coach Steckschulte, I imagine the first thing you're thinking is Kaleida's got to start missing some foul shots, or we're not going to really have much of an opportunity to get back into this one. Well, they're in an unenviable situation. You have to foul, and the Wildcats shoot this percentage they have been. Missing the first, so that's what that's what you need if you're Columbus Grove. Is Logan Diller will come back in. Joey Joey Warren, he will have a seat. All of Kaleida dropping back to the other side of the court to prevent any long passes. Missed both. 
Derbyshire dribbling. He pulls up for three, and that will go out of bounds on Columbus Grove. Thirty-four point nine seconds left. Still a six-point lead, and Derbyshire will commit the foul. So he'll pick up his fourth. Naming our Stolly Hustle Award winner at the end of this one tonight. A couple of guys up in the running for it, which we'll have for you at the end of the contest tonight. Is Devin Quarter Cracks goes back up to the line and hits the first. That's a big one that makes it yeah. a three possession game. It is so much easier when it's a two shot foul rather than a one shot in uh, one situation. It's both. Nine of 12 in the free throw line since we've gone to double bonus. As Kaleida can hang on here, that's really how they've done it. Here's Brubaker from downtown. His three-pointer goes in and out. Diller there to clean it up with the right hand. And the shot will count. I believe it's going to send Diller to the line. That's foul on Gerdeman, his fourth. And we'll take a look at the replay here. You can see the nice positioning to go get the basketball right there. And there's the jump in by Gurdam at the end, but missed the free throw. Missed it, and Zeller is fouled. So it will walk to the other side, and we'll shoot some more foul shots. This is going to end up uh, being a big PCL win for Coach Kortokratz and his club. We'll put them in the driver's seat, although a lot of big games left to play. I'm, I'm a Miller City fan. I know they lost last night to an improving Ottoville team. But Miller City shoots the basketball so well, they're going to be in every game. And yep. I think they'll have something to say with this contest before the league race is over. Zeller hits his first shot. And I'll tell you what, if you want to explain how important it is to get good at foul shooting and be able to yeah. hit those shots when it counts, you're going to pop a tape of this game in and see how Kaleida has really connected on these foul shots down the, down the stretch here. And sometimes you get the lucky roll, that helps too. 59-51 Kaleida. Clement for three. No good, try to tip back by Brubaker in the foul. I think that's gonna go against uh, Zeller, right? Uh, yeah. I believe yeah. you're right, yeah. Diller, rather. Nope, Zeller, you're correct. That's the second on him. So when it comes down to fourth quarter execution, it's been a nice job by Kaleida. They've only turned the ball over once in the quarter, and they've made a ton of free throws. And what do we get now? It's a, we get a pushy foul, foul on yeah. Voorhees, yeah. There's a foul on Voorhees. That's his third. So one of two at the line goes Brubaker, and now we'll see Zeller go to the line to shoot two. What a great job by our crew tonight. Missing first. Great PCL matchup here tonight on WOSN. Great win tonight as it appears to be for Kaleida as they'll continue their undefeated string in the Putnam County League. Missing both, final seconds. Voorhees will pull up from three point range and gets the bank three pointer. Timeout Columbus Grove. So Bulldogs are still competing. Four point lead for Kaleida, 6.2 left. We'll be back. Welcome back, a 59-55 lead for Kaleida, 6.2 seconds remaining, and we, we've been saying for a while that Kaleida pretty much has this one wrapped up, but Columbus Grove has been hanging around and hanging around. Well, they have one timeout left, so an um, immediate score and like a steal on a time, and a, an immediate score and timeout, they still have a chance. Kaleida inbound. There's the foul. And there's the, well, yep. that's about immediate as you can get. Yep. And that will 
conclude Dace Derbyshire's night as he picks up his fifth. He'll leave with 10 points. Now they're trying to get a couple of misses and hope they have a chance. If you're Coach Quartercratch, you've told your guys don't go anywhere near a pewter colored player because <laughs> you don't want any contact that would stop the clock and or create the three points and one shot. Yep. See Diller coming in for Warnicky over on the Columbus Grove side. And Good to see Langholz back in the game. I, I thought that fall he'd taken was a pretty serious one. I'm glad he's been able to back and contribute from this point guard position. Indeed he has. Has that elbow wrapped up. Looking pretty good. Here's Zeller. Hits the first. I think Zeller's been the guy that's shot pretty much most of the foul shots here in this fourth quarter for Kaleida. I didn't track them individually, but they're 12 of 17. Wow. Uh, let's call it 12 of 18 since they went to double bonus. Final seconds. So that will do it for this one as the final score here tonight is 60 to 55. Kaleida comes away with a terrific victory here tonight as the Crowd starts to filter out here tonight. Stolle Insurance is a proud supporter of local high school athletics and wishes all the local teams good luck in the postseason. Tonight, our Stolle Hustle Award winner, Devin Quartercracks of Kaleida. 23 points tonight, just a great force offensively and defensively. He was all over the court tonight and just did a terrific job for the Wildcats. Hit a nice, uh, hit a couple of key three throws down the stretch in the fourth quarter. Just did a great job tonight for the Kaleida Wildcats. He made a couple of threes when it was important. He handled the basketball very well. We saw he passed the ball out of the trap against the uh, the pressure that they saw. He said a nice ball around basketball game and a good PCL win for his team. Well, that's going to wrap it up for us tonight. Once again, your final, Kaleida 60, Columbus Grove 55. For Mark Shine and our entire WOSN staff, I'm Patrick Hamler saying so long, everybody, from Kaleida. <laughs>